What up, players? It's Warboss Tap in this mod. Welcome to part one of my How to Paint a High Elf Shadow Warrior video. You can see my model up to where we got today is on the left here, and he's got base coats on as well as a nice non oil shade. And the colors that I used to get him up to this point are as follows. In no particular order, we've got Rune Fang Steel, Balthazar Gold. Zandri Dust without a label on it. Thunderhawk Blue. Cantor Blue. Oh, is there anything else? Oh, yes. Hello, Celestia Gray. Where did you go? Celestia Gray. And Dark Reaper. Thanks for watching everybody, hope you enjoyed this first part of the video series. Let me know if you have any questions, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and we'll see you in the next video. Later players! Alright players, let's get started painting the Shadow Warrior. The first color I'm going to use is Dryad Bark. We're going to use this color to paint all the dark leather areas. For us, that will mean painting the boots and the gloves. Just start lighting a little bit so you don't see my shadows from my uh, finger from the bottom. So starting with the boots and making my way up to the top. Shadow Warriors are, I think, a, a great fluffy unit. I definitely am really happy that they came out with a kit for them, a plastic kit for them, because the old metal ones were just ugh, showing their age. Now, I, I don't think any two Shadow Warriors are meant to look alike. They all have great different combinations of arms, and they're not all identical. So your Shadow Warrior is probably going to look a little bit different from mine with the the weapons and the, the angles and the poses. So this is just an example and if you're if you've got a guy with holding a sword in the left hand instead of a bow or um, using a different sword than mine, I chose this awesome almost like a Psy kind of sword, then yeah by all means just do what you need to do. The last part we're going to paint Dryad Bark is here. We're painting the wooden shafts of the spears as well, or the arrows rather, as well as the quiver. So one of the things I found interesting was that these guys took so uh, such a small amount of time to paint compared to the rest of the high elf range, like the that, that sword master guy that I painted a long time ago. It's amazing how much less time this took to paint up. And I think it's because the colors were a lot easier to blend. Celestia Gray now for the white areas. So the white areas are going to be the under sleeve, so where the glove meets the shoulder or the shirt sleeve. Both sides. As well as the there's like a little a little bit of his tunic in the front, right between the armor pieces. Uh, I was never I was never interested in high elves. I gotta tell you guys, the first time I saw a high elf figure was when we bought the Warhammer Fantasy Battles starter set a long time ago. I think it was like third, second or third edition, or was it fourth? With goblins and and high elves, and there were plastic figures, and there was little cardboard 
almost like yeah car paper card stock of of things like a war boss on a wyvern a high elf bolt thrower a prince on a griffin but they didn't have the capability to manufacture all of them so what they did was they made like these cartoon cutouts of them it looked really really strange okay uh, Dark Reaper is going to be the base for the cloak. So I remember buying that kit and thinking, oh wow, this is pretty cool. It's kind of like this game is like chess or or something like that. I had no idea what miniatures or, or wargaming was. I had gotten into Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Some of you know the story because of Return of the Lich Master. And... Uh, I thought that was a great game, I loved it, and then when I found out there was a war game, I was like, I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna buy it, because I, like I like the universe, I like the, the fluff, and, and I like the, the stories. So I bought this game, and I see this, you had a bunch of little goblins with spears, and night goblins with hoods holding bows, and uh, the elves had spearmen? Was there more than spearmen? I don't remember if there were even archers. I just remember looking at the spearmen and thinking, oh man, these cone helmets are ridiculous looking. And and I think that was it. I didn't like the look of the, the white. They were dressed all in white. And there was no... Uh, there was no color, really. It was like white with silver and some gold accents. I don't remember there being color. And I just thought... Oh, it's boring, it's not interesting. And then I tried painting one, and I thought, yep, can't do it. I couldn't paint white, because the old skull white paint, it just was not a good paint. Everything comes out looking really thick and sloppy, and I just didn't care for it. All right, so let's see if we can zoom in just a little bit. I think I should look something like that right now. The cloak is Dark Reaper. We've got some browns and a little bit of white. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint the tunic with Thunderhawk blue. A tunic means the basically just the shirt sleeves and the front of the top. Igor, focus. Sorry, master. I remember a friend of mine at the time, and I was so young, and a friend of mine, Kenny, his brother, Jason, and uh, their youngest brother, Wesley, we'd all kind of gotten into the hobby at the same time. We were playing the role-playing game, and so we'd, we'd bought the starter kit, or the box set, the starter box, and we were, <laughs> we were trying to learn the rules and um, put the models together and, and play them. And I think some of you who started young, or who... This might be a familiar story, but like you, when you're when you first start in the hobby and you don't have like a carrying case or anything to carry your models in, you just kind of throw them in the box and they just kind of kind of smash around each other. <laughs> it's like really bad for them, but we were just kids. But the painting we did, our paint jobs were so so bad. I think about him now, and um, I can't help but laugh. Thinking about how bad my my paint jobs used to be. I should show you guys. I should dig up some of those old goblins and show them to you guys. All right. Next color is going to be silver. So we're going to go with. Uh, actually, oh, before we do the silver, I forgot the tops of the arrows have to be painted with celestial gray because they're going to be kind of like white feather shafts with. A little bit of blue on them so I usually paint the, the feather shafts first across the top 
and then I go from the top down. And that way you don't really mix your colors too much with the color you're painting underneath. So for in this case the arrow, I don't know what you call it, the arrow bodies, the bodies of the arrow, the wooden parts, are that dryad bark color. But since you're, we're painting from the top here, and we're just kind of slowly going down to the to the actual arrow shafts, then uh, the goal is not to get that white onto the brown. If you do, it's okay because we're still we're still in base colors. You can just hit it up with a another lick of dryad bark and should be fine. Okay, at this point we're going to paint on the silver, and for the silver we're going to use lead belcher. Actually, no, not lead belcher. These are high elves. They're not going to use lead belcher. They're going to use rune fang steel. It used to be called mitro silver. I think that was a better word for it, or a better label for it, because uh, silver is really the color you want to go for with high elves. They're such a you know, such a what's it called? Awesome classy, noble race that they don't... Uh, you, you think of s uh, steel or iron or lead and uh, you're thinking of like the lesser lesser races. Okay, so you have a choice now. You can either paint these, definitely the scales, but either the I'm gonna call it the the middle part of the girdle here that I just painted, or the top part over there in silver. Uh, one or the other. The other one is going to be whatever you don't choose to paint in silver is going to be painted blue. Okay, the bow right at the handle and the grip is some more silver pieces. So we're going to paint that silver right there. You can see that. Okay, we're also going to hit the shoulder pads, the center definitely. You don't have to hit the, the edging because that's going to be painted gold. And last but not least, we're going to hit the helmet. Yeah, I never cared for the, the cone helmets. I think that's a Tolkien. Is that a Tolkien thing? That all, like the that the high elves in Tolkien's books had these like cone helmets. I don't know. Okay, <clears throat> now we're gonna do blue. So you were gonna take. Cantor blue, and there's two places we're going to paint this blue. First on the edging of the tunic, or actually the scales, rather. And then the other place is on the... So let's actually paint this part on this corset first. Ha! Called it a corset. His girdle. His man girdle. Okay, and then the second place is going to be. You see the rim of his scaled armor has some trim, so we're going to paint the trim blue. It's nice deep Cantor blue. Also, is a great color for sh for the shadow warriors. I've seen some shadow warriors with the trim painted in red and uh, I just I kind of prefer the bl the blue trim blue is also a high elf color that's pretty consistent across different models and so using it on the trim here kind of ties it in so if you've got blue as a prominent color to the rest of your army <clears throat> that's the color you paint it if you use red as your dominant color then, of course, you would go with the red. There we go. 
you can kind of see where all that is there. Oh, 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 oh. Got some paints. That's right, I'll clean that up later. Okay, so your model should look like this. I'll clean all that other stuff up that I messed up, and then we'll hit the gold next. So, get your Balthadar gold ready. Okay, for this next part of the video, we're going to use Balthazar gold to paint all the gold areas. So, I like to paint any trinkets in gold because gold is like a spot color, so any trinkets that are hanging down, like that one there, it's nice to paint it in gold. For me, I've always thought that for high elves, gold is like the trim color, so all the armor pieces or any pieces that are that are metallic, if it has a trim or edging, then that's what you would paint gold. So here on his man girdle, you can see that there's a trim right above the gem, so we're going to paint that in gold. And then the little blue area that connects to the tunic is also going to be painted in Balthazar gold. I heard this rumor that there's going to be a new... Maybe not new, but yeah, it's, it's going to be new, but it's not going to replace, rather, I should say. GW is coming out with a, a new line of paints, and it's supposed to be coming up or being announced pretty soon, but no idea what, what kind of paints they're going to be, if they're effect paints or if they're going to be, you know, more. It would be great if they came out with more hobby centered paint products, I think like um, pigment binder, um, realistic water effects, pi different kinds of pigments. I think that would, that would really be cool. Also, it would keep people from going to third party or other, not third party, but other modeling companies to get what they want. Like Vallejo makes great pigments. Forge World makes great pigments. Maybe they don't want to bump heads with Forge World. I don't know, who can say? You're also going to be painting in gold the shoulder pads, the rim of the shoulder pads. You can see the center we painted silver. So the shoulder pads have this gold trim. That we're just going to very carefully drag the brush along. There's the right and there's the left. And finally, we're going to paint the... Some of these helmets have them, some of them don't. There is like a little crest design in the center. Okay, I believe that's it. So the hilt of whatever bladed weapon, the trim and any hanging trinkets off of the corset, then the uh, trim of the shoulder pads and also what I like to do is paint underneath the shoulder pads in the gold color. Then if there's a design on the head and actually oh the final part is the design on the quiver. So there's a little it's kind of like gold embroidery or something right there. And get just a little bit of paint on your paintbrush, on the edge of your paintbrush, the tip, and then just drag that along rather than trying to stab the paint onto the model, which I used to do when I was a little kid, and just does not look good. All right, you'll also see something I didn't paint on the back quiver, a little strap that connects the quiver to the cloak, and so that's what we're going to paint right now. Right there. Okay, the last thing we have to paint is the bow. So for the bow, the color we're going to use is Zandri Dust. This is a pot of paint that I bought that did not come with a label. I did not rip the label off. The guy told me it was Zandri Dust though, and I believe him. Because it looks like the other Zandri Dust I bought. 
You could also go with XV88 if you want. This is just a base color for the wood of the bow. I didn't mix the pot at all so you can kind of tell if you look that my pigment is separating and uh, you don't want that there's this there's a paint pigment and this kind of like oily medium in the paint pot I guess that makes the paint move around on the models and if you don't shake them up then the paint goes on really will appear like watery and the color will go on really thin, so you want to make sure that you mix your paints and that you use a wet palette or a ghetto wet palette, which I haven't been doing unfortunately in this video. It's kind of been going. So small little things like using a wet palette or taking a couple seconds to shake up your paint pot will really save you some time in the long run because now I'm going to have to go back and touch some of these spots up later because I'm just trying to get through it right now. All right, that's what our model looks like right now. And uh, the next thing we're gonna do is wait for everything to dry. And we're going to use some known oil on the tunic, the shirt, and the uh, silver. So the cloak. Tricky thing with known oil is that it's going to pull towards the bottom. So it's going to try to pull and, and drip down to the bottom of the model and get pulled into a little, little recess at the bottom. So you, you don't want that to happen. So just make sure that you paint around it. I'm also going to get all the brown areas and pretty much just everything. The silver here on the shoulder blades, silver here in the front of the helmet. Quiver. So you can see here here what I'm talking about. The Wash is kind of pooled at the bottom of the, the, the cloak there, so you always want to be checking every couple of seconds, because if you look away and you focus on something else, but you've painted a lot of wash in the upper areas, then it'll pool towards the bottom. That's the one thing you don't want. You don't want any wash pooling in in your model, because it's really hard. It creates a an oily finish that makes it really hard, really difficult to kind of fix without painting repainting over a large area here we are in the front now you're not throwing a lot of you're not slapping on the the wash a lot of it you don't need a lot of wash it's just to kind of fix or cover any sloppy initial paint painting that you did and to also create some nice natural looking shadows And before they were called shades in the previous range, when they were called washes, the uh, previous wash was called Badaba Black. And I, I love that wash so much. It, didn't, it also didn't have this oily finish that known oil does. If you don't, if you don't mix your paint pots, and uh, I really like it.
Okay, so everything has kind of gotten this known oil wash, and there's not much more we can do because it's all it's all washed. So we're going to take a little break. The only thing you're not going to wash is the bow. So make sure you leave that. That doesn't need anything. And um, what you are going to wash around the bow, though, is the silver area by the grip. It will create some nice shadows and uh, shade the shade the area around the hand really nicely. Okay, so we're gonna take a little break there, and we're gonna come back for part two. And also, stay tuned. So we're gonna finish make our model kind of like this guy here. And um, we're going to do a separate tutorial on how I did the base of this guy. So uh, check that out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Latest players!